Consider the expression that is on a board. How can we simplify this expression? What is the square root of 2 times the square root of 4 plus the square root of 7 minus the square root of 4 minus the square root of 7? It turns out that this whole problem simplifies into an integer. But let's see how we could simplify it. The first thing we're going to do is set the entire expression equal to x. So if we can calculate the value of x, we can calculate the value of this entire expression, which is what we want to do in this problem. Now, one of the best ways to get rid of a square root symbol is to take the square of both sides. So x squared is going to equal we're going to take the square of the square root of 2, and we're going to square everything on the inside. Now keep in mind, if you have an expression a times b and you wish to square it, this becomes a squared times b squared. But let's say if there was a plus or a minus symbol between a and b, such as a plus b squared, this becomes a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. You would need to FOIL it. In this example, the square root of 2 is multiplied by this entire expression. So we could use this formula here. We just need to square those two parts separately. So this is what we currently have at this point. Now, the square root of 2 squared, that becomes the square root of 4, which simplifies to 2. And now what we need to do here is we need to FOIL that expression. So I'm going to write it twice first. So we have the square root of 4 plus the square root of 7 minus the square root of 4 minus the square root of 7 and then times itself. So now let's FOIL. So the square root of 4 plus the square root of 7 times itself, we can write that as the square root of 4 plus the square root of 7 squared. The square root of 4 plus the square root of 7 times negative square root of 4 minus the square root of 7, that's going to be the same as multiplying these two terms. So because we have two of them, it's going to be negative 2 times the square root of 4 plus the square root of 7, and then times the square root of 4 minus the square root of 7. And then finally, the last two, notice that we have two negative signs, so that's going to become positive. So it's going to be positive, the square root of 4 minus the square root of 7, but it's going to be squared. Now, whenever you square an expression that is within a square root symbol, the square root and the square will cancel. So we're just going to get what's inside of the, the first square root symbol. And that's going to be 4 plus the square root of 7. Now, when you multiply one square root by another square root, you can simply multiply the things on the inside. You can combine it into a single square root symbol. So this is going to be negative 2 times the square root, and then on the inside we have 4 plus the square root of 7, and then times 4 minus the square root of 7. And then for the last part, the square root symbol and the square will cancel, giving us 4 minus the square root of 7. So this is what we now have. So at this point, what we need to do is simplify the expressions. The square root of 7 plus negative square root of 7, those two will add up to 0, so they cancel. And then we could combine 4 plus 4, which equals 8. So we have x squared is equal to 2 times 8, and then minus 2 times the square root. And let's FOIA what's on the inside. So we have 4 times 4, that's going to give us 16, and then 4 times 
negative root 7, so we got 4 root 7. And then these two, that's going to be plus 4 times the square root of 7. And then positive square root 7 times negative square root 7, that's going to be negative square root 49, which is simply minus 7. So we're going to have x squared is equal to 2 times 8 minus 2. Now the two middle terms, negative 4 plus 4, that's going to add up to 0. And then we have 16 minus 7, which is equal to 9. So this looks a lot better than what we had at the beginning. Now the square root of 9 that's going to equal 3. And then 2 times 3 is 6. And then 8 minus 6 is 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. So we have x squared is equal to 4. Now to get x by itself, we need to take the square root of both sides. So we're going to get plus or minus 2. Because 2 squared is 4. And negative 2 squared is also 4. Now, but which one is the answer? Is it positive 2 or negative 2? What would you say? If you didn't have access to a calculator, what answer would you select? Let's say if this was an exam. Would you select a positive 2 or negative 2? In order to get a positive value, we need to subtract a large number by a small number. And in order to get a negative value, the situation has to be the reverse. We need to take a small value and subtract it by a large value. For instance, 9 minus 3 will give us a positive number because 9 is larger in value than 3. But 3 minus 9 will give us a negative value. So looking at our original expression, which one is larger in value? Would you say 4 plus the square root of 7 or 4 minus the square root of 7? Whenever you add something to a number, you're going to get a larger value. And whenever you subtract something from a number, you're going to get a smaller value. So 4 plus the square root of 7 is larger than 4 minus the square root of 7. That's a small value. And so therefore, we should get a positive value. So this entire thing is going to equal positive 2 as opposed to negative 2. Now, we can confirm that with a calculator. So if you have a calculator with you, type in the original expression just to make sure our answer is correct. So if you type in square root of 2 and then times open in parentheses or brackets, the square root of 4 plus the square root of 7, and then minus the square root of 4 minus the square root of 7, you're going to get exactly a positive 2. And so that's what this entire expression simplifies to. As you can see, it's really not that bad, but it does require some intuitive thinking in order to simplify what appears to be a complicated expression. Now, for those of you who want more example problems, such as this one on simplifying radicals or radicals within radicals, such as nested radical expressions, feel free to take a look at the description section below of this video because I'm going to be posting uh, some other links as well. So you can take a look at that if you want more example problems. So that's it for this video. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, and at the same time, don't forget to hit that notification bell if you want to get more updates on videos that I'm going to be posting in the future. So thanks again for watching this video.